Hi, my name is Dana. Today I wanted to show you how to use the Wheaton Public Library calendar to see events and register for programs. You want to start from the Wheaton Library main page and then click on Calendar. At the top of the page you'll see Featured Events. The featured events will scroll automatically after 5 to 10 seconds or so, or if you prefer you can use the arrows to manually click. The main calendar is displayed below. I'm going to scroll down so that you can see the contents of September. And there are quite a few programs here, so I wanted to share with you a few ways to help focus the search on your, the calendar. I'm going to scroll back up to the top so that you can see our filters. The filters are located on the left-hand side of the page, and there are several different filters that you can take advantage of. One of those filters is a keyword search. If you were specifically looking for a class on Excel, you could type that into the keyword search. I'm going to also try a search for do-it-yourself or DIY. Once you've typed in your keyword search, you want to click the Apply button. And from there, you'll be able to see any program that focuses on DIY or whatever it is, the search that you've typed. If you would like to go back to the full calendar view, simply click Reset. Other filters include registration type, which allows you to choose between programs that require registration and those that do not. Age group, choose from adults, teens, youth, or all ages. The last filter is program type. Program type allows you to narrow to a specific category. You can see the list here. You can also choose multiple categories. So if I wanted, I could choose arts and crafts and business and careers and see any event that applies to either of those categories. I'm going to click the Apply button. And then looking at the calendar, you'll see that now I only see programs that have to do with either business and careers or arts and crafts. Let me demonstrate how to register for a program. First of all, I want to find a program that has registration available. If you look at the individual event, you'll notice a few items that are common to all. First of all, the title. Cartooning Action Animals is the event that I'm interested in, and it will tell you that the time is from 10.30 to 11.30, and that registration is open. To get additional information about that program, if you hover over the title for just a moment, you will see a sidebar that pops in from the left-hand side. That will give you additional information, such as where the, room is, where the program is located. In this particular case, it's a virtual program. What age group it's appropriate for, registration required or not, and event details. Assuming this is something you'd like to register for, you're going to want to click once on the title. This is the details screen. Some of the information on this screen is duplicated from the sidebar that you saw on the previous screen, but some of it is new. You'll see date and time and room information on the left-hand side, program type, age group, program description, and disclaimers in the center of the screen, and location details, including where the program is held, most likely that's at the Wheaton Library, and contact information if you need it. There are a few extra buttons located near the top of the screen that allow you to provide yourself with some reminders. You can add to a calendar. That allows you to add to your Google Calendar or iCalendar. Print this event or share this event. There is an additional icon not visible from this screen called Remind Me that is visible on programs that do not require registration. And to register for the event, you're going to want to scroll down to about halfway past the screen. Now, if you wanted to register for this program, you're going to type in the first name, last name of the person who's interested in it, grade is asked for but not required, so let's just say Ramona's in kindergarten. If you would like to register a second child, simply click Add Another. And if you change your mind, you can always remove the registrant. Let's give Beezus a grade as well. You could add additional children or participants if need be. It will also ask for the parent or guardian legal name for events that that is needed. In this particular case, it is. So let's just. Oops. 
phone number and extension are not required but are asked for. If you have any special notes, this is a place where you can add them as well. And then how did you hear about this program? And let's just say we read about it in the e-news. I'm going to go ahead and register for the program by clicking once. If you entered an email, you will receive a confirmation that you registered for the program. Click continue, which will return you to the monthly calendar screen. If you would like to register for additional programs, you could do so from this screen. Wanted to mention a few more things. You do have some choices for how to view the calendar. The default is month, which we've looked at already. You do have a choice to look at upcoming events. Perhaps it's halfway through the month and you don't need to see anything that has already happened, but you would like to see any events moving forward. Choosing upcoming will show you that. Week shows you everything that is happening this particular week at the library. And of course, the day view will show you everything that is happening today. Use the arrows or the date to scroll back and forth. If I hit the right arrow, that will take me to tomorrow and the day after that. If I find that I need to scroll further back or further forward than one day at a time, if I click once on the date, click the calendar, Choose the correct date and press enter. I'm going to go back to the monthly view. And the last thing that I wanted to mention is that if you see an event that does not say registration open, sometimes that means the event is one that you can simply attend either virtually or in person. Events such as library card sign up month and genealogy assistance are good examples of programs that do not require registration. However, there are some programs that are simply registered through a third party, so not through our calendar software, but registration is still required. Two examples of that include the art demonstration portraits in oil. If I were to click on that, you'll see information about registering for a Zoom webinar. So the registration does not take place through our website. I'm going to go back one screen. And a second example is the SCORE Business Roundtable. If I were to click on that, you'll see that registration is happening through the SCORE organization as opposed to through the library calendar. And that is how to use the library calendar in a nutshell. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any further questions, feel free to call the library at 630-668-1374.